Mexico has been in the international news a lot lately, but not entirely for good reasons. It's been a popular destination for a long time, especially with foreign residents, and now really with digital nomads. The influx of people willing to pay more for rent and other services is being blamed for gentrification, especially in the popular neighborhoods like Polanco, La Condesa, and Roma Norte. As basic costs of living increase, the locals are being forced out and they are not happy about it. Since we are in the business of exploring popular areas where expats and digital nomads like to live, we couldn't really cross this hot spot off our list. However, we were actually pretty hesitant to go there. We didn't know what to expect or if we'd even be welcome. We did really enjoy our time in Mexico City and it does have a lot of great things going for it. But it also has several drawbacks and one thing in particular that will probably keep us from going back. So in this video, we are going to talk about the pros and cons of Mexico City, starting with the pros. And the first is that it is affordable. It certainly is a lot more affordable than both the United States and Canada and might even be more affordable than where we live in Ecuador. We stayed in the neighborhood of Polanco and it is a high-end neighborhood. There was a Ferrari dealership across the street from our Airbnb, super nice mall. That area is definitely more expensive than the others. We went to La Condesa, Roma Norte, Roma Sur. Things were a lot more affordable over in that area. The other great thing is that the neighborhoods themselves are all walkable. We walked all over the place, but we did take taxis in between the neighborhoods on a couple of occasions. We got really ambitious and walked from Polanco all the way over to La Condesa. I think we clocked in eight or eight and a half miles that day. Our feet were pretty tired after that. But again, you can walk all over the place if you really want to. But of course, you can always grab a taxi or an Uber and there's buses all over the place. Yeah, we took an Uber back. I told Amelia, there's no way I'm walking all that way back to Polanco. And I think the Uber was less than $4. It was like $3.50. All the areas we visited were very clean, mostly. There wasn't a lot of trash or dog poop. We're always on the lookout for that because that is a common problem in Ecuador, the dog poop, not the trash. The weather is also fantastic. It's a high elevation city, so you're gonna have nice, cool spring-like temperatures year round in the 70s and low 80s on really hot days. So it doesn't get too hot, it's pretty comfortable. Yeah, the weather was spectacular. I think it was perfect. The internet was great. It was fast, reliable. We didn't have any power outages while we were there. Same goes for the cell service. We had no issues whatsoever. And of course it was super affordable. Yeah, the Airbnb we stayed at was fantastic. It had an indoor lap pool, so I used that a couple times while we were there. And there is so much to do in this area and throughout Mexico City. And there are museums everywhere. You could go to museums every day of the week if you wanted to. And parks, parks galore. Huge parks, little parks, linear parks, parks with lakes, big trees. We walked a lot in the parks and they're beautiful and they are safe. We felt very safe. We were out during the day. We don't ever go out late at night, so we can't say anything about that, but there was a lot of security around. Yeah, considering how Mexico is considered pretty unsafe, we were shocked at the amount of security, and because of the security, we did feel safe walking around. We met so many super friendly, happy people, which we love, and we find that very common throughout Latin America, but we met just a lot of people from all over the world. We heard a lot of different languages being spoken. It was really cool. Yeah, there's an embassy row in Polanco where all of the foreign embassies are located, and we saw so many Many foreigners in that area walking around and shopping. Also, speaking of shopping, there are really super high-end stores, especially in that area. There was a Louis Vuitton and a Christian Dior and all of those high-end brands. Some of them I've never heard of before. Amelia had to educate me. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't go in any of those. Those are way out of my price range, but it was interesting to see those there. That area reminded me a lot of Michigan Avenue in Chicago. There are also some really high-end outdoor malls and indoor mall. I mean, you've got your shopping covered, so if you're looking for something really nice you're gonna find it in Mexico City but what I thought was cool is there's a lot of little mom and pop stores and also a bunch of vintage stores in the La Condesa and Roma Norte area. The grocery stores were phenomenal so much more selection than we're used to here in Ecuador in fact the city market grocery store we went into, I thought Amelia had died and gone to heaven. Uh, that was the nicest grocery store I've ever been in in my life. It was like nothing I had ever experienced. But we also went to a really nice Mercado. We love going to the Mercados. And we stumbled into a really cool outdoor farmer's market. We see those a lot in 
Mexico and in uh, Ecuador. And it was really neat to see that they had the whole street blocked off and it was a wide variety of stuff. And that was in the Lock Home Day Set neighborhood. And we, of course, ate out way too much while we were there because the restaurants are fantastic. It's a culinary dream going to Mexico City. We found cuisines from all over the world and everything we had was amazing. And there are so many different options. If you have specific dietary concerns, you're gonna be able to eat out with no problem in Mexico City, at least the areas that we visited. And another thing that was really interesting to us was that there was no blasting music. With all of those people and all of the traffic and the businesses and this and that, it still felt quiet compared to our life in Ecuador. And also they have great health care. Mexico in general is known for its great health care. We were right by a massive hospital complex in Polanco, but they have big hospitals all over the city. So you're gonna find great health care and it's very, very affordable. That's why a lot of people go to Mexico from the United States to get all of their health care needs taken care of. And it is also Polanco, La Condesa, that area. It is close to the airport, which is really convenient. You're right there into the International Mexico City Airport, which is actually pretty easy to navigate once you have gone once or twice. They're so efficient now with customs too. We were in and out of there with no problems at all. Before we dive into the downside of Mexico City, hit that subscribe button if you like these types of destination review videos because we have a lot more places on our list. Yay, I'm very excited. Okay, and now, not so exciting, are the drawbacks to Mexico City, starting with our number one reason, and that is gentrification, and this is a big drawback. We saw this actually quite a bit, big high rise condo buildings, high end places, and in between them would be the original inhabitants of the neighborhood in not so nice places. And you can just see how a lot of people would be pushed out by these new developments. The developers are coming in, putting up these high end buildings in these areas because they are, it's prime real estate and it's happening all over the world, not just in Mexico City, but Mexico City has been in the headlines a lot for it. And some of these areas are seeing a lot of price increases. As we mentioned, we stayed in Polanco and that is definitely a much more expensive area because they have all these new fancy high rises and these new, fancy development and plus it's a popular place with diplomats but you're seeing that happening in the other neighborhoods now as well as the gentrification is starting to spread and it, you know part of this because it's becoming so much more popular with tourists and so the tourists come in and they are able to spend a little bit more money and drive up those prices yeah and a lot of the places that used to be for rent by the year are now just airbnbs a lot of landlords are making a lot more money off airbnb than they do off of monthly rentals yeah, and we, as we said, we still felt that it was affordable. Even where we stayed, it was definitely less expensive than some of the places we visited in Ecuador. However, it all depends, of course, on your situation. The next con is how crowded it is. We are so spoiled here in Ecuador, a country of 18 million people and Mexico City has like half that population in one city. There were so many people, it was, sometimes it was hard to walk, especially during rush hour when people were walking on the linear trails to get to work. There were so many people, it was actually hard to walk. Yeah, that one we were not prepared for. It was actually pretty crazy. When we came back home, we really realized how much less populated it is here in Ecuador than it is in other areas because we noticed that in Colombia too. It really, it really drove it home on this trip though. Yeah, it sure did. Especially when you have that many people, there's a lot more traffic. The traffic is just bumper to bumper, nonstop oh all gosh. the time, everywhere you go. In fact, it took us longer to take an Uber from La Condesa back to our Airbnb in Polanco that I, th I think we could have walked it faster. That's how slow it was. It took us like 45 minutes to get to the airport. I'm pretty sure we could have walked it in about that if we didn't have luggage and stuff. It was just the traffic was just ridiculous. And then when we got home in Ecuador, it was like smooth sailing. <laughs> we were both shocked. There's no traffic on the road. It was just just a night and day experience. Well, and the airport was so crowded in Mexico City. And then we come home to Ecuador and it's just so tranquilo. Boy, that was a nice way to come back. Yeah, and the Quito Airport just got voted one of the world's most enjoyable airports. And we say that every time we fly out of Quito or into Quito. It is so nice compared to some of the other airports we've been in. Another drawback about Mexico City is that 
a lot of the neighborhoods are just not that safe. You really have to be careful. As we said, we don't go out at night and we did see a lot of security, but we still are on guard, especially after getting moto robbed in Guadalajara. You gotta take that very seriously. Yeah, we when we say we don't go out after dark or at night, I mean, we're usually, sometimes we go out to dinner and walk home after dark, but we're talking like seven or eight o'clock at night when there's still a ton of people out everywhere. We did that a couple of nights while we were in Polanco and we felt very safe because there were so many people out everywhere. It was We were never on the street by ourselves. And unfortunately, Mexico City is known to have earthquakes. They've had a couple doozies over the past few decades, and that is something I would not want to be there to experience. Of course, we have to worry about that here in Ecuador, too. Yeah, the newer high-rise condos are all built to those newer earthquake standards, but a lot of the older places are not. And it, you definitely run a risk when you live on the ring of fire of becoming, you know, the victim of an earthquake. Yeah, that would be quite horrible. And another thing that I really am not a fan of is that you cannot drink the tap water and that just kind of sucks. Yeah, I asked uh, our Airbnb host because the Airbnb was so nice. I thought, well, maybe this building has a filtration system. And he said, no, don't drink the water. The water in Mexico City is not safe to drink. He said, because of the earthquakes and pollution, the water is not safe. He said, don't even brush your teeth with it. But we always brush our teeth with the tap water when we travel and we've never had an issue, even in exactly. India. Yeah. <laughs> yes, hopefully you didn't just jinx us, JP. And another drawback was that there is a lot of sewer smell. Yeah, yeah, we get that occasionally here in Ecuador. Not a lot, but mm -hmm. we smelled it a lot when we yeah. were walking around. Of course, we did walk for like eight miles a day while we were there. And I was really surprised about the amount of smokers. That one really kind of shocked me. Yeah, people walking down the, the street, the roads, the parks, smoking everywhere. Everybody was smoking. We're not used to seeing that in Ecuador. Smoking is not that popular or common here, mainly because the cigarettes are very expensive. So people just haven't, they kind of gave up the habit, I guess, years ago. And our number one drawback or the thing that we did not like about Mexico City is the air pollution. It was terrible. Yeah, we both felt like we were sick almost the whole time we were there. And Amelia was convinced we were sick. And I said, I think it's the air quality. It was so uh, horrible. I mean, you you could see blue sky, but it was had a yellow tint to it. it was, there was so much air pollution. It was hard to breathe. We could smell it in our Airbnb. It was just so bad. And it's as bad as Mumbai and New Delhi when we were in India. The, the air pollution in those cities was horrible. I, it was just as bad and it was shockingly yeah. bad and it's the main reason why we probably will not go back or spend much time in Mexico City even though the city is wonderful and we loved it there if they don't do something to curb the air pollution it's not going to be livable yeah it was just nasty I just did not feel well I was sneezing I mean I I just felt sick Within a day of after we left Mexico City, we both were fine. And yeah. we knew then that it had to be the air pollution because nothing else had changed. And it, all of that pressure in our face and just feeling fatigued and just not feeling good it went away within a day, like within 24 right. hours yeah. of leaving there. Yeah, it definitely was not the elevation because we're used to that living in Ecuador. It was absolutely 100 percent the poor air quality i feel really sorry for the people who live there i guess you get used to it but i cannot imagine especially people out there jogging and exercising out in that ugh, yeah. breathing that air and yuck. check out this video next to see what we had to say about guadalajara mexico yeah we stayed in the world's coolest neighborhood and it was pretty cool i have to agree it really was <laughs> All right, guys, before you go, leave us a like so that YouTube knows to recommend more of our videos to you, and we will see you in our next video. Ciao. Ciao.